Looks like every week we have to do something concerning Mason Good and this time round as United is still running its investigations. Teams have gone ahead and really thrown in requests to Manchester United of taking Mason Greenwood on loan. Welcome to United Matters channel. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? I'm going to show you how how and which teams are really ready to sign the player known as Mason Greenwood whose transfer windows are really still open, not permanently, but on loan basis. And we are going to break it down totally on both sides of Manchester United and Mason Greenwood on what the implication is on either sides. We are talking about Eric Ten Hag still not yet convinced of how the game had hardened up against West Ham because that was out of his expectations and has given the reasons why. Rokan David is my name. And don't forget to subscribe. And let's also talk about... Uh, there is a midfielder who plays for Southampton that has been linked to Manchester United. He goes by names of Romeo Lavia. He plays for Southampton and is really looking great. I saw him really play well in the game of Chelsea and Man City when I think they beat both of these teams. He's really 19 years of age and obviously he's a CDM that has gone ahead to really re revive or rejuvenate that midfield of Southampton after the departure of Romeo who was really doing great job into that midfield. Now, we all know the case of Greenwood. His cases we are dropped and now he's really a free man. Though, there are lots of things that United are still looking in through to see to it that they want Mason Greenwood case at United not at the police because it's also a different case altogether at Old Trafford between Greenwood and between Greenwood and uh, and Manchester United, but we've been told by Gareth Mike. Gareth Mike is a football reporter for the Daily Mail. He has confirmed to us that Manchester United have received loan inquiries for Mason Greenwood from Turkish clubs and more from leagues with open transfer windows. And um, I think the agent of Mason Greenwood is really doing the best. He's trying to do the needful and really put his client into the shop window to see it that he finds. He finds a club to play until the end of the season. As it looks, looks like his return is known this season. As I told you that if Greenwood is returned to Manchester United, he's going to return in the preseason. But returning right now at Old Trafford, I see it as something that is not going to be acceptable. I mean, it's him having talked to the manager, Eric Ten Hag, talking to some players that he was with in the academy of Manchester United. I know what it means for him. It's really a hard time because... United is really thriving. If at all United was struggling with goals and uh, many other things and we're really looking bad, doing badly, maybe pressure would have been there from the fans that, why don't you bring in Mason Greenwood back? I know there is, there is a group of United fans who want Greenwood back and there are those that don't want him back. But obviously, it's going to be the stand of the club because if you don't want him back, you have to pay the termination contract fee, of which it might be around £30 million. And with United struggling to get this money to buy players and uh, refurbish the stadium, improve the services at Carrington, £30 million will be a lot of money to pay for that player. So there are very many factors that are being considered. And right now, there is an opportunity for Mason Green to go on and really play. And it comes out to play into the benefit of Mason Green because if you don't want him back at the club, then why don't you let him go and play on loan such that he goes, gains back his fitness after gaining back his fitness. In the summer, he puts himself in a shop window. Obviously, he gets another club. <laughs> That's it. So, this is a, a move done by the agent and, and the representatives, lawyers plus, of Mason Greenwood to pressurize Manchester United to know their stand because they are taking long. It's now a month plus. No positivity Reply has been given to, or no green light has been given to Mason Green, they're going to return to Manchester United. And the time is burning out. With March, April, and May, those are three months left. I think Greenwood wants to be playing the game of football. As I brought you a story that he wants to return to you or to Carrington imminently to train with the first team. As it stands, the club of United is into the rock and hard place. Why? Mason Greenwood was was really declared a free man you get so the court and the prosecutors in england said 
the cases were dropped, meaning that he was proved not guilty. What does that mean? It obviously means that you have to get back him to the club and train. Thank you very much. You've been paying his salaries. And he also thank you very much that he has been earning £75,000 ever since he was really suspended by Manchester United. But the reason as to why he, has, he was suspended for close to a year has now died out. He has been fronted as a candidate who is not guilty. He's innocent. So all these loan requests coming in through from other teams, the agent is trying to put them up to put United on pressure. All right, if you're still doing investigations, why don't you let my player go away and play such that by the preseason, he's really good on form back to where he was because having spent a year without playing the game of football, I believe it's going to be something hard for him to hit the ground running and to bring him back in the Premier League. He needs to go out to a certain league, play there, then he gets himself ready for the preseason because I know United are going to get back Greenwood on the pitch. <laughs> That's it. In the summer, they will because people will have forgotten everything and uh, they'll have drawn a very clear clear defensive mechanism from those fans that say we don't want we don't want Greenwood to be at the club. So as it stands, Greenwood wants a loan. And Mason Greenwood and his agent are in talks with Manchester United according to me because this is not something easy for the club of Manchester United because if you don't want him back, then let him go out on loan, play until the summer, he returns, and then you give him your ultimatum at the end of the season but he needs to be playing to get back his sharpness as a player and his talent is really generational it's undoubted when he goes anywhere and fires in goals it's really going to be a positive message to everyone around the world that greenwood is back and if i told him united i go for this deal i let him go out in turkey all anywhere to play on loan then after playing on loan he comes back firing in goals they can cash in for him and take him, but all he's not wanted at the club. I think that will be a decision that will benefit both sides. And now Talk Sport has gone ahead to tell us that Greenwood and his representatives held a face-to-face -face meeting with Manchester United Club on 16th February as part of the investigation. The striker thought he would be able to rekindle his United career, but there are concerns from both the men's and women's players about such a return. Now, that of concerning the concerns concerning the men and women's team we've talked about that a lot and you know that it's not news but what's news in this segment is greenwood and his representatives facing united on the 16th of february meaning that they faced eye to eye they met and talked now we don't know what got out of that meeting and i know at a point x it's going to be really put out to the media and be knowing about it. So we are waiting to see what is going to pan out from these transfer requests panning into Manchester United thick and fast that they want Mason Greenwood signed on a loan deal. So we are waiting to see how United is going to go this, undergo this because to me I think it benefits them. One, they will share the salary. He might, they might even tell the club, are you going to pay full salary? <laughs> That's it. If I told you I'm going to pay full salary, get the player. That means they are saving. Even if they are paying 50% and United is paying like £35,000 a week, that means they would have gone ahead to save £40,000 a week that the other club where he's playing on loan will be covering. I think that's act that works well for United. And I would go ahead and really, and I really accept it. But they are also afraid of giving him a loan and when you give him a loan he goes outside there and scores ridiculous goals because for him he's a very good player and scores goals in goals in and out then pressure will amount to the club and the people around so it's a tricky situation i don't know how united is going to handle it but here are some of the leagues whose transfer windows are still open benin ethiopia bangladesh Fury Islands, Nigeria, Singapore, Maldives, South Korea, Tajikistan, Philippines, Moldova, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Norway, Japan, and Iceland plus Turkey. So those are the leagues that are still, those are the leagues whose transfer windows are still open. And uh, I think 
they can be open until April. So this boy is really having a chance to find himself playing a ball competitively again for the very first time ever since his charges were dropped. So it's in the hands of Manchester United to make a decision on whether they let him go or not and on what grounds would they have laid for him to let him go or keep him at Old Trafford until the summer or the end of the season. Now, there is a 19-year-old midfielder known as <laughs> known as Romeo Romeo Lavia. He plays for he plays for Southampton and uh, United are really looking in for a player who can really come in through and really do the job that Casemiro does. I won't lie to you that I've watched him a lot of times, but uh, I can really bring you some of his stats this season and you'll really love what he's doing. He's 19 years of age. <clears throat> he's 19 years of age, 1.8 meters tall, and obviously he is a player that is playing at Southampton and this season in the Premier League, he has gone ahead to play 15 games. He has started 13 and he averages 72 minutes per game. So, he has he has one goal. <coughs> uh, these goals are not goals are not concerning me. What is concerning me is the passing. 41 passes per 90, big chances created, accurate accurate per game, 87%, accurate in own half 92%. He's really a very good player. Let's go to let's go to defending and see. He makes interceptions, 1.1 interceptions per 90, tackles per 90 at 2, possession 1, 0 0.4, dribbled passed per game 0 0.7, clearances per game 0 0.5, error led to short 0, error rate to goal 0. So this guy is really another one that Ten Hag might be loving. And we've been told by a source called Adrian Kajumba. And he has told us the following about this lad that United is really scouting this guy and they would love to find him at the club. United among the clubs keeping tabs on Southampton midfielder Romeo Lavia. And this guy is really great. When you look at his physicality, he's Tyler made for the Premier League. Adrian Kajumba reporting this story works for Daily Mail Football and is a reporter there. So it shows you how good this player has gone has gone to be. And Ten Hag is really keeping tabs on him. You know, talents like these need to be respected. And I respect a talent like this. And um, I think he's better than Scott McTominay. He's better than Fred. And we need a player to play into that CDM position when Casemiro is either rested or injured or suspended. You saw how we really suffered when Casemiro found himself out of position to play for Manchester United because he was red carded. Because he was red carded. In the game of Crystal Palace. Three games without him, everything was not doing great. And even yesterday, you saw him before he came off the field of play. We never looked good enough to find ourselves in a position of winning the game of Western because um <clears throat> Scott McTominay couldn't run that midfield single-handedly. But when he came in through, he just got back that midfield to him, and Sabitza looked great for uh for Brice not. Bruno Fernandes and very many others were really acting beta as it looked like by then. Now, let's leave that at that and let's wait and see whether they'll go in for Lavia because if at all the ma the team is interested in him, <clears throat> we'll be getting to know who is who and whether United are really so much into the player. Now, let's talk about Eric Ten Hag giving us the post-mortem the post about the game of football <clears throat> that United has played, that played yesterday and won by three goals to one. He said, I didn't expect this first half versus West Ham. It was difficult to get into the rhythm of the match. And then in the second half, we were behind and we have to fight. And that's what they did. I'm happy. I'm proud of my team. Now, being proud of his team, but he's hinting about the first half. And he's asking himself, why are we really getting slow starts at the first half? That's it. We draw the game of Leeds because of a slow start at the first half. And uh, the game of Crystal Palace also, our start was really slow. Even against Barcelona, we are really having a, experiencing a slow start. 
So that is something that needs to find a solution for. And if at all he does, then we'll be a happy team at Manchester United. So your thoughts on to Greenwood, loan request received by Manchester United are welcome in the comment section below. And what do you think about Lavia Romeo from Southampton? United keeping tabs on him, but they are not the only team targeting him. Do you think Ten Hag would go in for a player like him, who is just 19 years of age? Yet he's having Zidane Iqbal, who is at age also. We have to accept the exceptional players in the world. So, I sign out for now. See you later. May the Almighty Lord bless you abundantly. I'm out. Second video of the day. More one or two are coming.